Hello again, it's me, Melton, the Mel Little Melto channel. Tonight we're going to have a look at the Makita Rory Hammer Drill, SDS of course, Modern Lumber DHR243 and it's HEPA filter. Just want to check that HEPA, is it HEPA is it? HEPA filter, yeah, HEPA. I was calling it a HEPA filter before, it's actually a HEPA filter. Model number DX02. Right, the drill itself can take up to 24 mil. It turns at 2,000. Sorry, 2,000 turns. No, that's, that's uh, sorry. I'll get this right. 950 RPM. It has beats per minute 4,700 beats per minute, which is actually quite impressive. I think it's about two joules for oh, actual hit impact. And as you can see, it's connected on here. It's not too bad. I find it a bit difficult one-handed to use this, so it's a bit big and heavy. And of course, it just detaches from here with the little clip here, this one here. Just do that, and it detaches. Right. And underneath here, we'll get rid. Of, just let's get rid of this. Underneath here is where the HEPA filter is. I'm not going to take it out just yet because we're going to put some uh, brick dust in here. And then I'll show you this thing come to little bits and pieces. What I will show you is this here is your depth stop gauge. You just lift it up like so and slide it. So if you want depth stop, you can have that. This one here, not really quite sure what it does. It's either broken or it's for taking this thing out and it doesn't seem to want to come out. So let's just hope we don't ever have to find out what it's for. I tried looking on the instructions. And it just says lift to release. So you just lift it to release, whatever it does. But believe you me, it doesn't come out. I've tried it in umpteen different ways. So don't know really, really what it's for. Inside here, of course, you have your connections and you have a little piece of rubber up on here. Now we'll get rid of that now because that's about it for that. There's not much you can say about that. This though. Now, I got the model that where the chuck actually you can replace it with a normal chuck, which is this one here, which comes in a very nice little plastic case. And I must admit, quite a boot chuck. I'll show you how to do that just now. You have uh, markings on here to say that it's locked in place and unlocked. All you do is you just turn it. Right. What are we on? No, it's sad. You just see this turn it. If I remember which way it goes. Ah. I was turning the wrong thing, it's the collet back here, this piece here you turn, that's it, right, I made a right hash of that, and you just push that on there, and you do the same, there it is, and it clicks, you've got to do it quick, you see, ordinarily the way I'd do it would be, how would I do it? normally do it, I made a right mess of this, I don't care, well, it seems simple enough, when I was doing it earlier on, it's not doing it now. You hold it? No. Right. Uh. Oh. There, done it. And then you just do that and put it back on. No, it's doing it for right. Let's see if we can get this right. That comes off. Push this on, which is now decided, yeah, it's still an unlock, like so, and do that and it clicks into place. I must admit with the drill turning it is a lot on the awkward side. Anyway, there, yeah. Yeah, right, typical. Doing videos for YouTube and they go wrong, as per usual. The handle though, working our way back, the handle, you've got to turn it quite a considerable distance to actually get it to actually move. Because it has these little spline things on here and it won't let you force it round to actually move it. So if you're in a position and you handle in different positions, prepare for a fiddly job to do that. So not real impressed with that idea. I just a normal 
circle thing would have probably sufficed. And of course here, you see it, is your three mode adjuster for just drill, hammer drill and chisel action across here and if you put it into there you can just start to turn the chuck like this, you see. But for the time being we'll just leave it over here. And of course working our way back we come with a handle, quite a nice uh, rubber on it and it is very grippy as well. Up on top here you have your forward and reverse and your lock is middle so you can't pull the trigger on. And of course coming down there is no belt hook on this one or any type of way for hanging on it and there isn't a space for it, I must admit. And of course when you come down here we come to this bit here which supports the battery mount which moves about. Must be for a reason, probably to do with vibration. And you just unclip it like that, take the battery out. And mine's came with two 4 amp batteries, a charger and as I say this chuck that's given us a bit of hassle tonight. Which it has been working absolutely perfect before. Right, but one thing missing, I didn't mention the light. Exactly, what light? There isn't actually a light on this, to be honest with you. But when we connect the HEPA filter back on again, where are you going to put the light? And then the HEPA filter just slides into there. A bit like a battery, how it slides in, you see. So, and that's really about all we can say what it's got on it. Because I say it's no light, and as I said, this thing here is certainly getting a bit of GBH. Yeah, it's working now. As I say, you just got to get a quick flick, and it usually does it. Okay then, how does it perform? Well, we're going to have a look at that. But also, what I'm going to look at as well, other things you can do with an SDS drill. I know this is actually rotary hammer, and it is actually that stated down there, it is a rotary hammer drill. So, we're going to have a look at some of the different fittings that we can put into it and different jobs you can do with one of these and now that we've got this chuck let me show you something else as well though what you can get as well for these keyed chucks as well and I'll just do a quick demonstration of how they fit into place right get rid of you again right as I said, you can get key chucks, you can get mobile ones of these with this fitting on it. It's an SDS type, you see. But once again, it does add a little bit of weight to the front end of it, this type of chuck. The other chucks there are a little bit better. So, anyway, you can get them. I've got a few of them as well, I've actually tried them out and used them in the past. Right, we'll go away now, and now we're going to have a look and see what, how it performs and what you can do with it. Okay then? Okay now, now you can see I've got my safety glasses on. No, they're not to try and make me look cool. They are safety glasses. Honest. Right, what else can we do with an SDS drill? Well, I'm going to show you now what you can do with them once you get the right attachments for it. Now I showed you the keyless chuck upstairs. Oh, that's clever. I should have opened this up first. Didn't. Well, the blow away in the wind them now. Alright. Forward, into drill mode, you just select drill mode down here, like so. Yeah, probably too far now. It is. You can tell this chuck's brand new and I've never used it before. Right, we can countersink. Watch. I basically drill. I'll miss that one. See? Quite rapid. And that's just that. So we'll take that out. An 8mm bit. So you can use them as conventional drills, see? No pilot hole in that one. Hit not. There we go. Right then. We see me do that then. OK. 
Okay then. So we'll take that away now. Now we'll take this off. And we'll go to the SDS chuck. When it decides to play ball. Again. Ah, forgot. It does actually work better when it's on rotary hammer drill. It does grip and clips off. I forgot about that. If it's on drill mode, it doesn't like to turn very good. That seemed to be my problem upstairs. Right? So we're going to drill some holes now. So what's the advantage of using a HEPA filter? HEPA. Yeah, that's it right. It's supposed to collect dust, which I've tried it and it does. But with a bit, get out of that. Uh, but there's a gap between here, so some it will fall down in the inside. And the beauty of using something like a rotary hammer drill, an SDS, they're a lot quicker. And rotary hammer actually has a bit more power than a standard hammer drill. And I'm not on about percussion, the normal SDS drills that we see. So this is a rotary hammer. In other words, the motor inside here is turning like this and it's pushing the bit mechanism back to the forwards inside here that actually hammers rather than the other way the motor's turning that way and it has to work a different way there seems to be more friction that way when the motor's turning like this when the motor turns like this, less friction more bang for your buck if you like now, standard 8mm bit in here and as I said, there might be a bit of uh, stuff coming through here when I'm doing it and I'm going to try and do these relatively quick as well you got to see yeah, it is longer for a reason because I'm going through the button first Now, there was quite a lot of stuff came through, but that's because we've got a gap on here. So, just to show you that the system does actually work, I'll drill a hole just straight into this brick here, or this brick here, right, and you'll see there, there'll be none, but there'll be a bit because the length of the bit. I'm not just putting a short bit in for this, okay? As you can see, the fan runs for an additional, they say it's 3 seconds, it's more like 2 seconds, but I'm not going to argue with them. If you count it, it is near enough 3 seconds, it's more like 2.5 seconds, but never mind. So the fan does run on for a bit, like once you have to take your finger off the trigger, you see. The, thing, the trigger itself is actually quite variable as well, it is very good. I know they say with SDS drills, you're supposed to start them off hammer mode first before you hit it. Nobody ever does, so to bother with that. So anyway, what else can we do with it? Well, we can screw drive with it. And I'll show you just now how to do that. Let's go to the HEPA filter. Yep. What's that? No. So how do we screw drive with this? There are a few ways we can do it. We can buy adapters like this here. That quite simply clip into his ears like so. Like that, it's in. I'll borrow this drill bit, sorry, drill bit, this screw bit, which is a PZ3 from this. Right. Not some gone in there. Like so. Lift that up, like so. Alright, pull it down, sorry, my mistake. Pull it down. Then take your hammer fan and we'll go and a say this one here. See, we've got it straight in, no problem. Right. Okay. And right, right direction. 
Oh, Zazy, my fault. Screw driving mode, not harming mode. Come on. There we go. See how it pulled that? No problem at all. That was so easy, it was unbelievable. That's a bit, I didn't expect it to have as much oomph in here as I did it. It did. Right, let's get rid of that. Another little trick we can do. Let's get rid of this. Let's change the, uh, do we change the chuck? No, we don't, no. We don't change the chuck. I'll show you another little trick. All right, pop that in. Give it PZ3 back. All right. Take your SDS and put it on chisel mode then now. Yes, chisel mode. Guess what I'm gonna do now? That one there didn't countersink it, okay? Right? I didn't countersink that one. Watch. See how it's sticking up, I'll show you it. See how it's sticking out? A little bit closer for this one. Right. Watch. Remember this is a chisel action. There we go. In. No doubt. You'll probably want to see that again. Well, okay then. Yes, I am using the SDS. Is a hammer. Well, it's a hammer drill, isn't it? So I'm using it on hammer. Right, well, just to show you, here we go, ready? There you go, in, no problem at all. So you see, now I've shown you that SDS drills aren't just for drilling in masonry. If you have the attachment, and I've showed you the keyless chuck, I've showed you the screwdriver bit here, what you can do, what you can buy with it, you can use it for screwdriving, you can use it for drilling and normal stuff. They may not be as fast as your combis, but what the po point? You've bought this, you might as well use it, you might as well use the systems that you have. It has actually any, it comes with it. And of course, you've seen me changing the chuck over. Let's put the back on hammer. I have to on the floor now. And it is relatively easy when it's in hammer drill mode. You actually take it off and put it back on again. But when it's in drill mode, it doesn't like to get changed. But I'll set back on that, and that's a Makita fault fail. So I think now we should return back inside the house now. Before we go at the house, we shall have a look to see what's in the HEPA filter. To undo it, you just do this, it lifts out in a way. Okay, lifts that out of the way. Then the next bit is, that's the bit you pull it down to pull it out, and it comes round. It's got a bit underneath there, which clips in the bottom, so it actually pivots. This bit opens up the actual filter itself and you can see even though a lot of that and that was pretty empty was this right. Right. and even although it did actually suck out quite a lot if you can see on there so that wasn't too bad and a lot of it actually went down through the gap whereas if I'd have put one of the hammer fittings in first I could have actually prevented that from happening and I should have done that. But it's like everything else, hindsight's a brilliant thing. To clean it, relatively easy. Right, unfortunately I've got to get dust on the camera. Right, it's basically just like that. Wipe everything away. Same with the inside here. Just give it a quick wipe. Don't blow it because you'll blow it onto yourself. And that's it. It's more or less clean after that. Then Clip it back into place again. Get your other piece. Is that bit? Clip it like that. There it is. Back in place again. And that's how easy that goes together again. Now, what I found with the hypo filter was when you turn it like that before you go to empty it, if you tap it with something light, like this, a bit harder than that, of course, all the dust that's in the filter falls out of the filter and goes into there because I decided to completely empty outside before I brought it back at the house and I actually did that and I found it did work so there's a tip for you for that one anyway so the whole setup cost me £440 and my dad did contribute towards it so it didn't break the bank for me right enough and he is impressed with it, in fact we're all quite impressed with it but as I said if there's a gap in the wood it will 
you will get dust coming down through it. It's inevitable that will happen. But straight up against walls, like these walls in here, they can save you a lot of time and effort. And if you're a businessman, money, clean up afterwards when it doesn't need the hoover up the dust because it does it for you. So that's very good and it does work. Anyway, now to this. We'll get rid of this. We don't need this on the table in case we knock it flying. As you've seen, are the money you're spending for these, why don't you use them for other things rather than just drilling in a cement? I mean, okay, it's got chisel action on it as well. I mean, I haven't showed it in chisel because what's the point? They're all roughly the same. They're actually called chippers. They have to chip away. You can't take massive chunks out of it. And if you make holes in it as well, that also helps to actually break it up as well. And of course, I went the full way and I bought the one where the house decided not to do it now again. See, it, it must be in here that it doesn't like doing it. It must be. Because it was working fine outside, but it comes in here and it just messes up. I can't get the damn thing to turn off again. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's because I've turned it the wrong way. See? I've had this tool for now about three weeks now, and I'm still not used to it yet. Yeah, and that's how it works anyway. Right, like that. So, use these for what you can use them for. Other things. Don't just go on the assumption that they're just for masonry. I mean, if you can get the right attachments for it. I've showed you the keyless chuck version. And you can buy attachments to screwdriver. Look what I did. It caught me out with the screwdriver. It literally buried that screw right in. And it wasn't supposed to do that. I was trying to stop it. But of course, hammer fittings have got that little bit. You've got to get past them at first for the expansion. Once they're past that, that's it. They're no problem at all. And that's what caught me out. But... As I say, everything on it works perfect. Uh, disappointed in the light though. The light's pretty rubbish on it. That's because it hasn't got one, has it? But where are you going to put it? I mean, you could have maybe put it under here, right enough. Or would that get in the way of the hypofilter? Probably, yeah, the hypofilter would have probably gotten away with that as well. So really and truly, I can see why Makita didn't bother putting a light on it. Disappointing, but I suppose you could always get one of them headlight things for up above your head and put them on. So there you have it. It really is a cracking drill. And as I say, I've used it, I've only charged this battery once. I've done about oh, 12 holes, say, with it. Has it dropped any charge? And yeah, it has dropped, dropped quite a bit of charge like on it now. I mean, uh, is it 12 holes I've drilled? No, because I drilled them in there as well. So I have drilled more than that, like. So you don't get a lot of massive runtime, but you've got to remember, you're also working the filler as well at the same time. So... It's bound to eat a bit of juice. And of course, I used it for other things as well, drilling and, and things. So, there it is. I mean, it is, at the end of the day, I like it. And we all like it. It's not that heavy when it's all clipped together. It is a two-handed machine right enough. You're going to have to use it two-handed. Not unless you're a great big 300-pound gorilla. He might be able to actually use it one-handed because it might just be like a little 18 volt. They'll never replace 18 volt because 18 volt is so versatile. These are just that little bit bigger. Uh, and of course, ah oh yeah, you could actually use it for stirring paint. You could also use it for mixing up plaster. You could use it for mixing concrete as well and things like that because it's not speed with these. It's power and, and the torque of them. That's what you're using. And then screw drill mode, that's what you're actually looking for. I don't see any point in just buying one of these and not using them to their full of, of full pr potential to what's there. Most people just use them just for masonry or a bit of chipping work and that's it. I don't know. I think we should be using them a bit more. Don't get me wrong, it isn't going to replace the 18 volt drill. No way. Anyway, you've seen it. I hope this has been uh, very, very helpful for you. I hope you've enjoyed uh, me playing about with it and showing you how to put hammer fittings in. I actually made a video on hammer fittings, the professional way, and I didn't put the hammer fittings in that way because I thought to myself, if I do things like that on a video where I'm saying it's supposed to be for professionals, to be honest with you, I don't know any of the professionals that actually put them in with an SDS drill. As far as I know, there's only a few of us that actually have or know about that. You know about it now. So you can put your hammer fittings in. It's actually quite safe. It's no problem at all. Just remember, use hard bits for that job. And you should be fine with it. And it'll do it no problem at all. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching. I'm Melton. Channel's called Little Melto. If you like the channel, thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. Please yourself. I'm not bothered. Anyway, good night and thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you the next time.